Hey everyone, so today we're going to can, pressure can, some sweet potatoes. I love sweet potatoes and this time of year is when I usually get them in bulk because tomorrow is Thanksgiving. So I'm going to go ahead and peel these, chop them up, put them in some water so they don't start to turn dark or anything, and then I'm going to pressure can them. I hope you enjoy. All right, so we peeled, chopped, and soaked them in some water. Now, just make sure that when you are chopping them, there's no specific shape or size that you need them to be. However, I go on a little bit of the larger side or as large as I possibly can to still have them fit in the jars and also be safely canned um, because I like for mine to keep a little bit more of the firmness. But... Make sure that you're chopping them into no more than one inch thick and that they are small enough to fit through into the jars. I used the regular mouth jars this time um, because I didn't have any wide mouth quart jars available. But wide mouth quart jars are a little bit easier to, to pack in as much as you possibly can because sweet potatoes are a little bit harder to pack them in. I made seven quarts because my pressure canner holds seven quarts, but as I was filling the jars up with the syrup, um, I ran out of syrup after six quarts. So I only was able to pressure can six quarts, which is fine. I just didn't stick a jar in the middle. If I had less than six, I probably would stick a jar of water in the pressure canner just so that you know, no jars are being knocked around or knocked over. Um, but six was fine. Not having one in the middle didn't do any harm at all. So let's talk about what's in the syrup. In my syrup, I used 10 cups of water, four cups of brown sugar. And yes, I used that brown sugar I made on my TikTok from molasses and white sugar. I also added four sticks of cinnamon and just a little bit of allspice. Now, this is my syrup recipe. There are other syrups that you can make. Um, some people just use white sugar and water. Some people just can with water. But I personally love the flavor that the brown sugar and the cinnamon gives my sweet potatoes. All right, y'all. So we got all six of the jars filled with the syrup. I'm going to take my debubbler and release those air bubbles. And then I'm going to wipe the rim with a little bit of white vinegar to make sure we get all of that sticky syrup off of the rim so that it doesn't hinder the uh, seal. And then screw your rings on finger tight and put your jars into the hot water. I have my canner or the aisle that the canner is on, on medium to keep the water warm and the jars warm and ready to can. I do want to share that there were two things that I did a little different than most. And again, my disclaimer is do your research. Always use an approved recipe when you're first starting out canning. And you can find those recipes on the Ball website or the USDA I went ahead and raw packed these. I have blanched them like those recipes have recommended in the past, but because I don't like for my sweet potatoes to be very soft, I like them to be a little bit more firm. I went ahead and raw packed these and they will cook in the pressure canner. The second thing I did that may be frowned upon on some canning communities is that I pressure canned on my glass cooktop. And although that is not recommended, my Presto canner did say that it is able to be used on a glass cooktop. Um, with sweet potatoes, they do have to process for an hour and a half. And my butane burner does not last the whole hour and a half. So when I tried to can on that yesterday, I had major siphoning because I had to lift the canner off of the burner and change out the canister. So here we are going to wait for it to start venting and then it'll vent for 10 minutes before we put the weight on. Poof, here's my turkey. <laughs> so tomorrow is Thanksgiving as I previously stated and while I'm waiting on the canner to come to pressure, I'm going to go ahead and prepare my turkey. 
So this year, I'm going to spatchcock my turkey. That means I'm going to cut out the spine and then place it flat in the roasting pan. I normally roast my whole chickens this way, so I figured I'd try it out on the turkey this year. To remove the spine, you just cut up both sides of it and then pull it out. I'm going to put the spine along with the neck in a freezer bag and then pop that in the freezer for a later date to roast it and then make bone broth out of it. I'm going to also add the carcass of the turkey after we've eaten all the meat off of it into the freezer bag as well. And that's going to go into the bone broth. Just a quick reminder, always disinfect and wash your hands when you're dealing with raw meat. Now, one thing I did notice is breaking the breast bones of a turkey is a lot more difficult than breaking the breast bones of my chickens, but I got her done. I'm flattening out the turkey in the roasting pan, and then I'm going to pour the brine over it and let it sit in the fridge overnight. So we vent it for 10 minutes and now it's time to put the weight on. Back to this brine. I went ahead and used water, apple cider or apple juice, kosher salt, brown sugar, five minced garlic cloves, some peppercorn, and five whole bay leaves. I also used some rosemary, preferably fresh, and then we're going to heat it up a little bit, not necessarily bringing it to a boil, but warm enough so that the brown sugar can dissolve and then remove it from the heat so that it can cool off completely before pouring it over our turkey. So this is what we want to hear to let us know we've come up to pressure. And now we process for 90 minutes or an hour and a half. The brine is ready to remove from the heat and let cool. And now let's take a break to clean up because cooking and cleaning simultaneously keeps your kitchen from getting completely out of control. So we process for 90 minutes and then we let it come all the way down naturally. After you've let it come all the way down from pressure naturally, then you open up the canner, but make sure you lift it away from you so that you don't burn yourself. It looks like we did a good job. So you're gonna take your lifter and remove the jars. You can see they're still bubbling. I can't really tilt it to the camera so that you can see it really good because you're not supposed to tilt your jars. And there was still some siphoning, which is to be expected in some cases when you have that syrup or sugary water, but it's definitely not as bad as the siphoning was when we had to change out the butane canisters. Another thing I wanna point out in this processing was that I almost didn't make it with the water that was in the canner. I did use the recommended three quarts for this particular canner and usually I'll put a little bit more in there but I didn't this time and I see now I'll have to continue to put more in there just so that I don't end up burning out all of the water in the canner. And here's our finished product and as you can see there was some siphoning but as the potatoes settle, the liquid will rise a little bit more and as long as you don't lose more than half of your liquid, you're still safe. Now, as we reach the end of this video, we're gonna go ahead and pour our cooled off brine over our turkey, wrap it up and put it in the fridge overnight. I did run out of plastic wrap, so I had to use aluminum foil. I do prefer plastic wrap, but either will do just fine. So thank you for coming on this journey today. And I hope that you all have a wonderful Thanksgiving with full of fellowship and family and good eats. Until next time, be blessed, y'all.